Hey there, once again, YouTube. How you guys doing today? Uh, it's Ben Ferriolo. First off, if you haven't already, please check out my website. There's a link in the description box below, right under my email address. It can teach you how to find, access, and analyze seismic and GPS deformation data to keep an eye on volcanoes worldwide. It even contains many different event examples and hundreds, I'm talking maybe over a thousand seismic plots pertaining to great many different earthquake swarms and events on many, multiple different pages. So, Check that out if you want. It's a pretty good resource, I, I think. Um, so, first off, we're going to start, and this is the past seven days as of 11.46 a.m. Pacific Time, June 26, 2019. We had a magnitude 7.3 in Indonesia, 208.3 kilometers in depth on the 24th at 2.53 UTC. It was pretty strong. And then we had two earthquakes just in the past day and a half strike up near the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. As you can see right here, let's zoom in. It will let me. It's kind of slow today. Sorry, guys. We had a 6.4 on June 26, 2019. And then on June 25th, we had a magnitude 6.3. And multiple, multiple aftershocks. And this sh this is showing largest magnitude first. Let's go in time. Let's click newest first. So you can see right here, there's a 4.6 and a 6.3. Then a 4.7 and a 6.4. And then multiple aftershocks after that. So that's very interesting. Right in this location right here near the Aleutian Trench. So this is definitely a subduction zone area right here. Right on the tip where the it looks like these two subduction zones merge. Right in this area right here. And those two earths were definitely strong enough to be uh, detected on seismic stations all across the world, including Yellowstone National Park. And we'll probably see that in just a bit. Going down, most recent, we had a 6.2 at 26.2 kilometers in depth at 523 UTC on the 26th. And look at the, did you feel it? Look at that. That's in the red. I never see this for magnitude sixes, maybe even magnitude sevens. I never see this. I usually only see did you feel reports in the red uh, when it's above a magnitude eight. Yeah. So this was definitely a really strong earthquake in Panama, right down there near Panama. All right. 623 people reported feeling it, but obviously probably a lot more people did feel it since not everybody reports to the USGS. And sadly, estimated fatalities are in the yellow. Same with economic losses. So that does mean that there was a little bit of destruction and a few people probably did die. I haven't checked the news reports yet. The, and the, this is weird. They usually do not do a tectonic summary for magnitude 6s. They only do it for magnitude 7s and above. So this is definitely very interesting why they even wrote this at all. Here, let's read it just real quick. The June 26, 2019 6.2 earthquake west of David, Panama occurred as a result of strike slip faulting in the crust at a depth of about 25 kilometers. Focal mechanism solutions indicate that the rupture occurred on either a steeply dipping, uh, blah, 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 excuse me, steeply dipping left lateral northwest striking fault. Say that 10 times fast. Or right lateral southwest striking fault. The June 26 earthquake likely represents faulting within the crust of the Caribbean plate. The region is tectonically complex. To the northwest of this event, the Cocos Plate subducts beneath the Caribbean Plate. South of this event, a transform boundary marks the border between the Cocos Plate and the Nazca Plate. Moderate to large earthquakes are relatively common in this region in the past 100 years. 29 other earthquakes, magnitude 6.0 and larger, have occurred within 100 kilometers of the June 26th event. The largest was a magnitude 7.5 that occurred on July 18, 1934, offshore to the southeast of this event. Yeah, so that's very interesting. And a similar magnitude 6.5 to this June 26th event occurred on December 25th, 2000, 2003, and resulted in at least two fatalities. So, that is very interesting. We had a large earthquake, a good size amount of seismicity in the world in the past seven days or so. So, we'll keep a close eye on that. But that's not really what I wanted to talk about today. So, here we are at Hawaii as of 11.50 a.m. Pacific Time, June 26th. And we see 14 earthquakes have been reported in the past 24 hours. And notice 2.4 at 41.8 kilometers in depth, 2.2 at 45.2 kilometers in depth, Pahala, Hawaii, Pahala, Hawaii. Now, a lot of these sometimes are actual earthquakes, yes. But when I see them centered in this location right down here with the depth between about sometimes 25 kilometers to even maybe 55 kilometers in depth, I usually go and check the seismic data to see if there are volcanic spasmodic tremor events. Now, if you follow my work, you know I've talked about that a lot. We have not seen a good amount of spasmodic tremor. I believe we haven't really seen much at all in terms of spasmodic tremor for maybe two, three weeks, maybe even longer than that. But today, it has reemerged 
And I just want to let you guys know, keep an eye on my website under the Seismic Events drop-down menu, by location, and the Hawaii page. I will post a an analysis page about these spasmodic tremor events tonight or tomorrow morning. So just keep an eye out for that. But I will um, put out a post out there on YouTube and Facebook telling you guys that the, uh, that the page is up. So... I will let you guys know, but let's go to the Mauna Loa monitoring map. Let's quick refresh and see if these really are spasmodic tremor events. Let's see, guys. Let's see, shall we? It's loading the data. Give it a second. Now, you can tell a lot of them are centered right down here where the epicenter of many of the spasmodic tremor events occur very deep occurring within the mantle plume and I have talked about uh, talked to professionals about this many times before and they probably do agree that it is showing some type of magma recharge within the mantle plume conduit feeding Mauna Loa and Kilauea in the lower east rift zone uplift does continue at Mauna Loa and the east rift zone it's still going on guys it's still occurring so and it's going to keep happening as the magma keeps refilling to prepare for the next eruption I don't know when that will be or where it will occur. That's pretty much impossible to tell. But I'm guessing, I'm just putting a guess out there, it's just a theory, I think Mauna Loa will be the next area to see a volcanic eruption, in my opinion. That is what I think. Possibly in the next two to three years, maximum. Maybe even sooner than that. But that's just my theory. Don't know for sure. Let's go to HTCD, the seismic station right over here. Past six hours. Yeah. Yeah. We definitely saw a good amount of spasmodic tremor. Looks like one, two, and three. Looks like we had three in the past six hours as of 11.53 a.m. Pacific time, June 26th. Let's go to the past 24 hours, shall we? We see there was one right here earlier in the UTC day on the 26th. And then here's the most recent right down here. So we've had four in the past 24 hours and five in the past 48 hours. You see that? There's the most recent ones right there. And there is actually one spasmodic tremor event on the 25th, early in the UTC day. Let's go up to TRAD just to show you, just to correlate it real quick. Past 24 hours, you can see, yep, spasmodic tremor right there. And three of them right there as well. Back to monitoring station. Let's go to the past 48 hours and you can see the spasmodic tremor event right there on the 25th. And it almost seems like seismicity was starting to increase just in the past 24 to 48 hours. Just a little bit. But we did see, again, volcanic spasmodic tremor has re-emerged. And why don't we go take a look at the seismic data from station TRAD, because although it's farther from the epicenter, these are pretty deep. So it really shows up quite well. I mean, let's all the way up north to Mauna Kea. All the way up north. Look how far away this is from the spasmodic tremor epicenters. Look at this. Let's go to HPUD. HPUD, if it'll let me. Come on, buddy. My goodness, this is really taking a while. Oh, lots of surface noise. Oh, that's not friendly. That's not nice. Can we do KKUD? There we go. Past 24 hours, and you can see in the past 24 hours, it's very hard to tell, but you can see some of the spasmodic tremor events did show up that far away as well. Again, you will see this even in more detail on the analysis page that I'm going to upload on my website tonight or tomorrow morning. So, just keep an eye out for that. Now let's go take a look at the recent spasmodic tremor events in the past 24 hours from station TRAD right on the slopes of Mauna Loa. All right, here we are with station TRAD in the HV network. Short period vertical dash dash location code when none is given. Uh, this again is short period vertical. We're not going to do a frequency filter as of yet, but for the analysis page tonight, I might just in case of the background microseisms or the very low frequency tremor, which does occur at, uh, in Hawaii actually. Sometimes you know how harmonic volcanic tremor can have frequencies, you know, sometimes down to 0 0.5 hertz at the minimum. Those are, that's low frequency tremor, usually from 1 hertz to 5 hertz. But sometimes I heard that Hawaii experiences very low frequency tremor, which is very strange, almost borderline microseisms. Almost looks like oceanic microseisms, but it's not. So that does occur sometimes, and sometimes it's pretty strong and hard to tell for microseisms. But we have the most recent data stream here. As of 12 p.m. Pacific time. Now let's zoom all the way out. You can see the first spasmodic tremor event is right here. Very emergent. Very emergent. Let's go to the spectrogram, shall we? Very weak. And usually they are because they are pretty deep, guys. They are pretty deep. But then again, this is signaling mass magma transport along the mantle plume conduit. Either, either going up or going down. I don't know into which volcano, I'm not sure. All I know is that this definitely is related to the mantle magma plume underneath Hawaii. 
and I've already talked to professionals about that for quite for quite some time. Uh, it's peaking at about I'm gonna say maybe a hundred amplitude count at the max. Very weak, very weak. So nobody would likely feel this at all, at all. Going down here are the most recent spasmodic tremor events, and we can see multiple earthquakes here, multiple deep quakes. Very, that's very deep, very very deep. And going forward, here is the first spasmodic tremor, actually, excuse me, the second spasmodic tremor event. Notice it is less emergent and actually looks like it starts with an actual earthquake. You notice that? It actually starts with an earthquake. Sometimes they are emergent and are only, only look like tremor, right? Sometimes they are not emergent and start like an earthquake and have multiple earthquakes in succession. So it just all depends on the process that is taking place down there. Again, there we go right there. Maximum amplitude count, I'm going to say 150 amplitude count. So it's a little bit stronger than the one earlier in the day. And going forward, we see another spasmodic tremor event. I'm going to say, let's see, this one ended no more than 15 minutes later. We saw another spasmodic tremor event about the same size. I'm going to say a little bit weaker. There it is right there. And going all the way down here is the most recent one right here, which was pretty strong, guys. This one was definitely a strong spasmodic tremor event, the most recent one, which started at about, what is that? I can't even see the thing down here, my bad. At about 1722 UTC, so that's very interesting, and look how it starts almost immediately, just like an earthquake, but you could tell it lasts too long to be an earthquake. It lasts from 1722 to, let's just say, 1744. I'll do a more accurate uh, length of time for these events on my analysis page tonight. So. About 22 minutes, right? About 22 minutes. So that's pretty long for a spasmodic tremor event. However, not the longest I've seen. I believe the longest I've ever seen was an hour and five minutes. It was definitely over an hour, just a little bit. About an hour and five minutes. So this definitely isn't that crazy. But again, spasmodic tremor has returned. Let's check out the dominant frequencies. Normal low to mid-range frequencies, just like all other spasmodic tremor events. So let's move on to something else real quick. Again, keep an eye out for my analysis page on this tonight. All right, let's move on. Here we are on the west coast of the United States, and we did have one extra quake, uh, excuse me, quake on the Blanco Fracture Zone. And if you do a little bit of research, and this was a magnitude 4.1, by the way. Uh, if you do a little bit of research, apparently in the late 90s, there's a strong earthquake swarm along the Blanco Fracture Zone here, kind of like what we saw on the 22nd, on June 22nd, uh, about five days ago or so, four or five days ago. Um, apparently it was much stronger than the recent swarm, of course, but they say that it was a volcanic swarm and there was likely a volcanic eruption along this fracture zone in the late nineties. So that's really interesting guys. I didn't even know that even occurred, but it does down here. We had a 0.7 at 4.8 kilometers in depth at Mount Shasta and, but that's not what I want to focus on. Looky, looky, looky guys. Let's zoom in. If it'll let me come on, buddy. Come on. Mount St. Helens, right under the summit, guys. Right under the dome. Perfectly under the dome. Look at that. Right in the center. I don't think you could get more perfect in the center. That's right in the center of Mount St. Helens. Magnitude 2.0 and negative 0 0.3 kilometers in depth. Remember, 0 kilometers in depth usually means sea level. Almost always, guys. So that means it was a little bit above sea level. 0 0.3 kilometers above sea level. But that means it's still under the mountain because... It goes well higher than sea level, guys. So let's just take a real quick look at this earthquake, just real fast. So this 2.0 occurred on June 26, 2019 at 528 UTC. So here we are in the seismic program swarm with the closest seismic station to this event. And about 528 UTC, we do see an earthquake right here. Again, this is one of the older stations. Does not look like it goes beyond a 2000 amplitude count much at all. Hopefully they update it someday. But this is the earthquake right here. Normal VT volcano tectonic earthquake. And then we saw another one right here, just a little aftershock, unreported, but an aftershock nonetheless. I'm going to say maybe 0 0.8 to 1.5. Don't know the exact amount right there. And that's pretty much it. Little tiny, tiny quakes prior to this. Little teeny, tiny poppings. And here's a teleseismic signature right here. At least, whoa, wait a second. Frequencies are a little high. 0031 UTC on the 26th. Let's go all the way to the world. 0031 UTC on the 26th. Let's go all the way down. See if it is. 0031 UTC. Where are ya? Well, I guess that's not. 
That is not a tail seismic signature, my friends. Frequencies are too high. That's why I thought it was weird. But this could be a volcanic earthquake or so I don't know what that is. That's very interesting. Maybe a rock fall. I don't know. So that's at Mount St. Helens, guys. Let's move on just real quick. Here we are back at earthquake.usgs.gov. Notice right here we have a teeny tiny earthquake in New York. Actually, just three kilometers south-southeast of Manhattan, guys. A magnitude 0 0.9 at two kilometers in depth. Pretty shallow. Uh, right in Manhattan, actually. So, I mean, the, the earthquakes do occur here and there, but it definitely is noteworthy when they do occur. Zooming all the way in. All the way in. You can tell right there. Oh, yeah, guys. That's very interesting. Let's try to see if we can find this. The closest seismic station. I do not believe there are any seismic stations in Manhattan itself. At least I do not believe so. Let's check out the phases. Arrival time. Oh, I guess there is. CPNY and the LD network. Now here we are in the seismic program. Swarm with CPNY, which is the closest seismic station to this event. Very close, actually. To Manhattan, New York. Here we see the magnitude 0 0.9. Looking pretty weak, but a normal high-frequency tectonic event. Very interesting, guys. But... The str with the strength that it's showing, it's strange how it does not last longer. You notice that? It's just a blob. Kind of like an upside-down snowman. <laughs> Looks very strange, but, you know, earthquakes like this do occur. And on this helicopter, they're always showing some weird, very, very low-frequency background activity. Look at those waves, guys. They're a little too long to be oceanic microseisms. I mean, from peak to peak. Remember, frequencies are from peak to peak of any waveform, right? Okay, so let's zoom in. From peak, let's see, 34 to, that's a, that, that's over a minute, guys. That's over a minute peak. So let's look at the frequencies of this entire area right here. Without a filter, log frequency. Look at that, starts at, so I don't know what is going on with this station or in this area in New York. 0 0.001 hertz. And then starts to dip down at about 0 0.016 hertz. Wow. That, I think that's even too low for oceanic microseisms. I don't know. That's just very, very odd, at least in my opinion. But let's move on to the last thing of this video. Now, up here in the Yellowstone Caldera region, we really have not seen any earthquakes reported for Yellowstone National Park at all. And you'll see there have been some in just a second. Near Lima, Montana, all the way over here, there's a 1.9 and 9.8 kilometers in depth. Then up near Manhattan, Montana, we see continued minor seismicity of about a 1.4 and a 1.7, 3.8 kilometers in depth and 4.5 kilometers in depth. But if you go over here, let's press refresh, refresh this entire thing, and it is this thing on .org. Let's click Maple Creek, you will see. And here's the tail seismic signature right here. I believe that is the Panama event right there. And we have somewhat of a distant quake. I believe that is a distant quake, possibly up in Manhattan, Montana, that has not been reported yet. But you can see many, many teeny tiny quakes. We're going to take a look at that in the Seismic Program Swarm just right now. Here we are in the Seismic Program Swarm with Station YMC near Maple Creek in the northwest section of Yellowstone National Park outside of the Caldera Boundary. Here we see a very low frequency event. Look at those low, low frequencies, guys, starting at about 0 0.2 hertz and ending at about 1.3 hertz. That is the teleseismic signature. Let's see, 227 or so UTC. Let's zoom out. 227 or so. That is, nope, that's not it right there. Let's see. Oh, wait a second. Hold on a second. This is the teleseismic signature from the Panama earthquake right there. But what happened? What happened at 227 UTC? And of course, seismic waves take a little while to travel to their source, depending on how far away, or excuse me, travel to a seismic station, depending on how far away they are. But let's see, right around that time, 227 UTC, that's very interesting. Let's see what earthquake caused that event. 227, where are you, bud? 227, aha, it takes about 10 minutes to reach Yellowstone National Park from Russia, I think, depending on the strength of the event. That's the magnitude 6.4, supposedly at 10 kilometers in depth near the Chamchatka, blah, 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 Ch Kamchatka, say that 10 times fast, the Kamchatka Peninsula in Russia. And then we saw 6.3, I believe, just prior to that. So that's the tail seismic signature to that right there. Remember, you always got to, if you see a low frequency event, always check out regional and tail seisms first. Rule those out and then go for low frequency event. And right down here, 
we do see a pretty strong regional event. That is definitely a regional event right there. Mid-range frequencies, uh, lot, really separated PNS wave arrivals. Definitely looks like it's pretty distant. At 1734 UTC, let's see if they have reported anything. 1734, 1734. Let's see here. 1734, not seeing anything, guys. Let's see, nope. Nope, nothing for the whole world. And that's, so they have not reported this earthquake yet. Again, PNF wave arrivals are pretty separate. So I'm guessing it's probably up in Manhattan, Montana, maybe a magnitude three, maybe even a 3.5 down in Soda Springs, either north or south. Don't know exactly which direction it's coming from, but that definitely is a regional event. But here we see multiple, multiple volcano tectonic earthquakes that do occur from time to time near Maple Creek. Multiple ones, pretty weak. I'm going to say probably the strongest one is maybe a magnitude 1.8, magnitude 2 at the max. We see two quakes right there. A few more aftershocks, a few more little teeny tiny guys all throughout the day. Seismicity has been slowly increasing at Yellowstone, but we still have not seen a good size swarm for, I'm going to say since December 31st, 2018, when over 250 or so earthquakes struck just West northwest of the northern tip of Yellowstone Lake. It was a rapid fire swarm. That was a pretty crazy swarm, which I have detailed on my website, by the way. I have most of the rapid fire swarms detailed on my website. Uh, very interesting event right here. That looks very interesting. Wow. Maybe a DLP or a Teleseism. 1555 UTC. Let's see if there's anything at 1555 UTC. Just to rule it out. 15, because if it's a large earthquake, they're usually going to report a large earthquake. And not seeing anything really around that time frame at all. So, that's very interesting. We did see a low frequency event. We do have one right here. Wow. That's very interesting. Almost, in my opinion, looks like a deep long period event. I don't know. I will keep a close, close eye on that. Because that's very intriguing. This looks like a regional event right here, but this does not. I don't know. I'll keep an eye on it, though. And that's that. Uh, just one more thing real quick. Here we are back at isthisthingon.org slash Yellowstone. Here we are at YNR in the Norris Junction area. It looks like there was a swarm right here. But as you will see, I do not believe this was an earthquake swarm at all because it, the times don't correlate very well with surrounding stations. And that was at about, I'm going to say between 730 and 8 UTC the 26th. And going to borehole 950, it is still seeing a server issue. Still seeing a server issue, guys. Borehole 950, a lot of the boreholes in the area. The data is still all there. It's still there, guys, and I will show you that right now. Here we are with YNR, Broadband Vertical, 01 Location Code, WY, Network Code. Again, this is a broadband station, so that will show teleseisms much, much stronger. Notice this is the teleseismic signature right here. What was that again that we saw at 227 UTC? What was that about? Oh, yeah, that was the 6.4. <coughs> Excuse me. 6.4 in Russia. Since this is a broadband station, I'm going to click high pass enabled. Do one hertz high pass filter to get rid of the super low frequencies. Notice it's gone, right? Any harmonic or volcanic tremor usually will always, always go above one hertz, guys. And right here, we can see the beginning of the teleseismic signature, which there is a little bit of higher frequencies. Yes, so that's very interesting. And let's zoom in. Right here, remember on YNR, we saw these drum beat events. But look when you zoom in. Now, now look at this. At first glance, they do look like earthquakes, don't they? They do. They really, really do. They look like they increase, carry a rhythm, and decrease. But let's zoom in on one. Eh, that does not look like an earthquake, in my opinion. Still could be, but you never know. Let's zoom in on this one. That definitely does not look like an earthquake. I don't know what that is. This one's emergent. Let's go to the spectrogram. Look at that. Barely any low frequencies at all. So what is this? What caused this? Now notice how it starts, I'm going to say, at about 731 UTC. And ends at about, I'm going to say, 758 UTC. Now here's borehole 950, right here, the 26th. Let's go to, what was it, 7 something UTC? Let's zoom out. What was it again? Okay, the 8 o'clock line, let's go to the 8 o'clock line, right here. So 7 something UTC, right? Sorry guys, my bad. About 734 UTC to the end. Okay, so let's start, so 734 UTC, borehole 950, 
is pretty much co-located with Station YNR, except Station YNR is at the surface and Borehole 950 is about 100, 200 feet or something like that under the ground. Nothing. Nothing. Except, notice there is a slight trace of rhythmic activity. Very slight. Very slight. Notice that? Look, look right up in this location right here. Notice that right around the same time frame. And it starts and ends around pretty much the same time frame. So, that was very weird activity, but there's no dominant lower frequencies. Let's use spectrogram to go to 55 hertz. Look at that. Look at that. That is the strangest thing I've ever seen in my life. I really cannot say what the heck was going on there. And it really doesn't correlate with other stations except maybe Borehole 950. But I don't know, guys. I don't know. You be the judge of that. I don't know. I thought that was very strange. I'll definitely keep an eye on this see if it happens again. Well, that's pretty much it for today, guys. I hope you have a great day. And by the way, I am going to be a lot more busy in the coming months and the coming years, definitely. Um, don't worry. I will still keep Yellowstone as a priority. I will still report on it and do um, analysis pages and stuff like that when earthquake swarms or steamboat eruptions do occur. Maybe even additional videos or posts about other, other events. But the reason why I'm going to be busy is because I'm looking for new work. And I'm trying to get my career going. And there's one other thing that's going to make me a lot, a lot busier. And I'm not telling you what that is yet. I'm going to upload a video on YouTube probably tonight or tomorrow morning along with my blog post. Uh, again, yeah, keep an eye out for my Hawaii blog post, by the way. Um, but yeah, you're going to see why I'm going to be busy. Just guess. If you have a guess, please put it in the comment section below of why you think I'm going to be super busy for the rest of my life starting in the next four months or so hint 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 and then again keep an eye out for my hawaii blog post that's coming out and i'll let you guys know when that's out too so keep an eye out for more videos and blog posts hope you guys have a wonderful day god bless and see you later